Well, hello. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to this uh, FME Community uh, Network webinar, uh, all about ArcGIS Maps and server apps. Welcome. My name's Mark Island. I'm what we call the FME Evangelist at Safe Software. And I have a number of colleagues with me today who can... Mark, do you want to say hi? Hi, I'm Mark Warren, and I'm a FME Server Technical Support Specialist. And I'm Dale Lutz, and I'm here to be part of the exciting Stump the Founder Transformer exercise that we're going to do at the end with the marble race. You won't <laughs> miss that. And we've got a uh, uh, fantastic organizer, Elizabeth, uh, is with us as well. Hello, everyone. Super excited Hi. to be joining for this webinar. Yeah, it's going to be great today. I've noticed that my camera sort of seems to try and focus on me and put little sort of squares around my face. So uh, we'll just have to ignore that, I'm afraid, for the, uh, <laughs> the moment. I can't figure out how to turn that off. I, I was saying to you, Mark, just a second ago that I watched the trailer for the next Predator movie, and it, it's kind of uh, a little bit ominous what I'm seeing. Um, ah. <laughs> it suspects me, obviously. <laughs> yes. Um, so, so we're on live storm today. Do you want to mention this, Elizabeth? Yeah, for sure. So if this is your first time in live storm with us, just to note, you can use that help button on the bottom left if you're having any audio issues. There's four simple steps to troubleshoot. And then we also have a few different ways to engage. So lots of you typing into the chat panel. Really cool to see where everyone's joining from. Thanks for doing that. Um, we also have the question panel. So if you have any questions throughout, you can drop them there and upvote other people's questions. And a lot of people are using the emoji react button right now. So that's really cool to see people's reactions throughout. Ah, excellent. I didn't, uh, I didn't see that myself. <laughs> excellent. Um, it's my first time on Livestorm as well. So if I get anything wrong, I, I apologize in advance. Uh, we've done this part, yeah? Uh, yeah, so, oh, that's okay. But if, if anyone does want to download the slides for any resources, I'll just quickly mention, you can click that download button as you hover oh. over the slide deck. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's cool. I, I, I love seeing everybody uh, mention where they're from, which is going to be very relevant shortly. So um, hold on to that thought. Don't yes. forget where you're from. Yes. <laughs> Um, so, yeah, so uh, I, we mentioned uh, there would be a surprise for everyone today. And that surprise is uh, thank you for joining us. We're celebrating our 20,000th uh, sign up in the FME community. And we're celebrating by uh, saying, hey, have lunch on us. So uh, how's that going to work, Elizabeth? So I'm going to drop into the chat now a link. And that will allow you to redeem a gift card from there through the service Javier. So there's a few different options you can pick from um, to redeem a gift card for lunch. So yeah, please do uh, click on that link and, uh, and yeah, have, have lunch on us. Uh, uh, maybe, maybe we should have done it a bit before to, so you could have ordered and eaten and watched at the same time, but um, I guess that would have spoiled a surprise somewhat. So uh, yeah. Elizabeth, just curious, where, where does this work? I see we had somebody from Botswana. Are they out of luck? So there is some options um, that are very international. So um, Amazon Fresh and such, where you can redeem that in all sorts of different um, countries. So should wow. be an option there for everyone. Yeah. Yeah, I hope so. Um, and speaking of which, the uh, 20,000th community member is someone called Anjana. So uh, oh. congratulations to you. And um, maybe we'll see if we can send a little uh, swag package or something out to you uh, out there, uh, wherever you are in the world. I'm sure we can find you. That's, uh, you know, it's important or it's, it's fun and important to celebrate these milestones. I know that we used to celebrate them uh, on our bug ticket ticketing system. I remember giving a prize to somebody who filed a 10,000th bug and then the 20,000th bug in FME. Don't worry, they're all been, they've all been fixed. Um, but, uh, but, it was, uh, but then some of the, the uh, staff started to game it, and they'd have like four or five up their sleeve, and they want to get close to it. There'd be this mad rush. Everybody's found things. So anyway, I, I'm sure Anjana didn't know that she, was, uh, she or he was about to uh, win this prize, and congratulations. We'll do something great for the 30,000th. So, yeah, absolutely. Maybe, maybe it should have yeah. been an award for uh, fixing the 10,000th bug. <laughs> Yes. 
it would have been a bit, a bit of an incentive there. <laughs> yes. Uh, so, yeah, so today we're going to look at a quick overview of the FME community, not too long, because I think we already know what it's all about. Um, we're going to build a, a crowdsource map on ArcGIS Online. Uh, Mark's got a, a great city guesser quiz that we're going to have a go at, and it'll show us how that all works uh, with FME Server in the background. We're going to launch our FME scavenger hunt for this summer, which is going to be a pretty great event, I think. And you'll want to sign up for that. And then Dale and I are going to try our hand again at Random Acts of Transformation, where we try and describe and demo a, a transformer picked at random. And last so time we got, what did we get? The XML update, or was it Dale? It was a horrible XML one. Um, when Mark and I were practicing yesterday for this, we managed to get the sector generator, and we're sure hoping it's not the sector generator either. <laughs> <laughs> that would be an interesting one. So, yeah, just a brief uh, note about the FME community. We try and be like the FME user conference, except we're 24 7. We're not every three or four years. So, we are like the uh, user conference has training. Well, we have academy training, we have our knowledge base. Um, the conference has a doctor's office or some sort of equivalent to that. And we have our technical Q&A forms, our knowledge base. We have ideas boards where you can post ideas for FME and we'll uh, try and implement them. We've got user groups. That's still a bit under development. It's not uh, working too great. So we'll have to revisit that. But uh, and yeah, we've got games and prizes. Just this is sort of like the evening event, I guess, at the uh, user conference. Just a bit of fun. Uh, while learning about FME at the same time. So, yeah. So, yeah, so the first thing we're going to dive into is a crowdsource map of ArcGIS Online. And let me uh, show you how that works before asking you to take part. I'm going to share my screen. And what we have here is an FME uh, server app. And what it is, it's a uh, community map of where you're from and where you would like to be. So I'm going to put my username as the FME evangelist. Uh, pick my location on the map. Where do I, uh, where am I right now? Well, and this is one of the nice things. Okay, you see where the... The last one was. I'm just going to pick somewhere in Manitoba um, just for uh, my privacy. But it doesn't really matter for you folks for privacy because we uh, we randomize the location by up to 10 kilometers. Are you going to show us how that works? I am, absolutely, yes. So I hit the confirm button. That's where I am right now. Where would I like to be? Well... Obviously, I'd love to be with you folk online right now. That's my number one. But my number two location I'd like to be, um, let's see. I'd probably like to be in Australia, somewhere nice. And uh, actually, I quite like um, Adelaide. That's a great place. So we'll say I want to be in Adelaide eating their meat pie floaters. Ooh, is that really a thing? It is a thing, yes. It's a meat pie uh, surrounded by a sort of sea of mushy peas. Oh, mm. fantastic. I think it needs better marketing. <laughs> I'm sorry, but anyway, I clicked OK, and this is running on FME server. And what it's doing is taking that information and passing it on to ArcGIS online. And I hope it runs a little bit quicker than this. Why is it still running? Oh. <laughs> Well, there we go, completed. So what I've got as well is this in ArcGIS Online. We have this map, and I can just refresh that map, and it will show me the locations of where I am. Show me where I am. See, it's worked fine in testing and fine in our practice session yesterday. And of course, as soon as we do this, something happens to uh, <laughs> go a little bit wonky. Let's see if we can actually uh, put some content into the, uh, the table. 
we intended to do some live debugging for the community. It just, uh, <laughs> well, exactly. no, we didn't, but, uh... <laughs> while we're waiting, David says the number one location he'd like to be is the FME UC. Not too yeah. long. It won't be long. No. Well, okay. This is <laughs> what, what do I say? Um, we have any data in there? I would, my son would say supply chain issues, Mark. That's the, that's, that's the absolutely. That's what it is. <laughs> well, folks, you know, this well, webinar is live when there's a little <laughs> bit of, yeah. see, it said it ran. And, uh, uh, what I can do is I could log into that and, um, check the log files or maybe Mark could do that in the background while, uh, sure. I can check on that. I know you have access to that. And yes, yeah, somebody mentions it could be the Arcus online server and that could be it seems to be very slow coming back. Yeah, that's it says it. that the feature was written. Excellent. Okay. Well, I think he's off the hook. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> well, let's um, share the link. Can you uh, share the link out there, uh, Elizabeth? And, um, I can. And folk right, can I'm try gonna... that. Okay, I'm we'll going to try it. And we'll see how long it takes. We do have a feature in the table, so it, it did get there, and it did get there. The supply think, chain. Yes, it, it could be, yes. See, I'm in there, so, you know. All right. We're there. It's just um, maybe, uh, oh, Bruce says, not just online showing healthy, so I, I don't know. Somewhere, maybe it's just my internet is slow for some reason, but... Uh, so on that geometry thing, Mark, we have to go hit the little teardrop to place the point? Uh, yes, you do. So on the top right, you go up there. Right, you if I go back to that page. Where do I want to be? Yes, yeah, so you, you click the little map icon on the side of your location thing, and then you want the little draw marker button. And it shouldn't let you draw a line or a polygon because I specifically told it not to. Um, you just want to drop a point down. And I know Dale's want wants to be in Las Vegas because that's where he all, always likes to be, from what I've heard. I've been shut out for many years now, Mark. Okay. It says that I'm queued on my server app. <clears throat> okay. So a lot of people obviously uh, doing that right now. I realized that with us having these public apps and with a lot of users submitting these jobs, we are kind of pushing our FME server to um, our limits. So we are actually doing a little bit of benchmarking in the background. Yeah, But still, we've got about 16 um, uh, engines, I think, or eight engines. It's not a small amount of engines on there. So I don't know what the, uh, the issue is there. Okay, well, uh, we are definitely writing that information. Uh, while we're doing that, let me just take a look at the uh, slides. Maybe I can uh, get back to slides here and talk about how this was put together. Actually, let me go back to my screen sharing. And we will look at the workspace uh, while you're uh, doing all of those. I would hope it's not my bandwidth, but I mean, if it's, if it's working for everybody else. Um, I think they may be referring to the screen. Oh, the blurriness, okay. Yeah, okay. but hopefully yeah. they'll make out. Okay, so let me see. We've got a workspace here and I will zoom in a bit just to make sure it's fairly visible. So what we're doing here is we're reading, uh, we're, we're kicking it off by creating a feature. It's the uh, the workspace app on FME server is, is running this and passing the user parameters to us. So it's passing your username. It's uh, passing uh, the location on the map where you are. It's passing the uh, location uh, of where you'd like to be. And uh, it's running with it here. So we take where you are, 
we, we say it's in lat long. And then to offset it, what I need to do is I want to say a 10 kilometer offset. So it can't be in lat long. So I reproject to a dynamic coordinate system, the reprojector. We, we generate a couple of random numbers like from zero to 360 and from 0.5 to 10, because we don't want to, um, we don't want to say zero to 10, because if we did zero, you'd be exactly where you were to start with. So that really wouldn't be hiding it too much. So we say 0.5 to 10 and two decimal places as well, because we want it to be a bit, uh, bit variable. So then we use the offsetter and the offsetter has got this great mode called polar coordinate. And I can say offset it by up to 360 degrees by that rotation, uh, the random number I generated. And the same with the distance as well, uh, times a thousand, because that was in kilometers and we're dealing with meters here. And then I just reproject it back to uh, lat long WGS84 and write it out to uh, ArcGIS Online, two different tables. And that's really as uh, simple as it is. It, it just works uh, like that. Let's go back and have one last shot at seeing if we have any data in there. And um, I'm going to assume we do. Yeah, I did create a web map in ArcGIS. I, so what, you, what we do is we have a table. This, um, this writes to a table or a feature layer in ArcGIS Online. And I'd already created a map that uh, refers to that table. So uh, the map should be there already, and it normally would be filled in by. But uh, yeah, it's taken a while. Let's see what have we got? Let's see what data is in there. And um, no, it's not shared publicly, I don't think. Uh, I, I guess I could do that. Okay, well, while that's doing something, let's um, let's just go back to the presentation hey mark before you do I, I just want to go off roading with you for a second I, oh sure bring back, let's bring back the workspace and oh boy somebody's at my door <laughs> <laughs> well i'll ignore that um but what i wanted to do is just uh say that there is a way to not have those two random number generators and instead uh do the math right in the offsetter to begin with and that, right it's a philosophical thing if, if people like to do that but if you bring up the offsetter and then do the arithmetic editor there yeah, um, you, there is a function under the math functions called rand, and you can. Um, sure is. And so you can bring that in, uh, and that gives you a number between zero and one. And then in this case, that would be enough. Or no, no, you want it to go. Then you have to multiply that by three hundred and sixty. I think. Three hundred and sixty. Yeah. Yes. So, 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 but, but this is a philosophical thing about how much do you want to embed inside of a transformer versus have it explicitly out on the canvas. And uh, I don't know, what, what is your call on best practice there, Mark? It, I, well, yeah, you're right. It really is a toss up between the two. Um, it, it depends how experienced you are and how experienced your colleagues are. Because if you yes. want to share the workspace with them and you've hidden everything inside the offsetter, it's just a bit more difficult to see it. So yeah. the random generator, just number generator, just makes it easier to see. So. Yes, as well, the random number generator makes it very clear what the range was as well. Like I noticed that in, in, if yes. you're using the RAND function, you're going between zero and one, and now you got to do math inside of the offsetter yes. here. Here we're making it um, like like scoring yeah. into an empty net, as we say in Canada. Yeah, it, it would be a little bit easy. I mean, that's just why I did that in there, to be honest. Yeah. But, but yeah, FME is very flexible about what we do there, so um, it. Uh, uh, it, it, it's personal point of view, I think. But we were talking with the community about making a, writing a book, community guide to uh, best practices, and we got a lot of volunteers to uh, <clears throat> who wanted to take part in that. So we'll oh. see uh, if we can do that at some point. I'm going to go see who's at my door. I'll be back. Okay. So Looks apparently like that's working, and it uh, actually yeah. had some data. So 
we're going to prove that, hopefully, by reading back that data and calculating the center of gravity. Yeah, so if it's a bit blurry, it could be because I'm running at full screen resolution and um, that, that could be one of the problems, Sarah, perhaps. So, so what I'm doing here is I'm reading back the data and I created a transformer on the hub called the Geographic Center of Gravity Accumulator. See, we have a center of gravity accumulator, but we don't have one that works on a geographic basis, like that takes into account passing over the, uh, the, the date line, the minus 180 plus 180 uh, line. So this is what this does. And we can see it's running. OK, it's got 43 features through. So a lot of you have actually run this, and it is actually working. And so that'll probably uh, take a few seconds. So what I'm doing is I'm calculating the center of gravity for where we are, so we can see where the average uh, attendee lives. And we can also see where the average uh, attendee would like to be. And we can pick that out. And uh, is that finished? Yeah, that's finished. So the center of gravity for where we are all R is, let's see, I can look at all of our points. So it looks like we've got a lot of people in North America, a lot of people in Europe, from what I'm seeing. And the center of gravity of us all, let me make that a bigger point and do it in red as well so I can see it. So our center of gravity is in the north of Canada. Out of all of the positions where we live and where we are, we're somewhere in Baffin Bay is the average. So make of that what you will. And the average of where we want to be, let's see where we would like to be. And of course, this is just a bit of fun, but we're trying to get across the point of how to crowdsource a map in, uh, in ArcGIS Online. So the average of where we would like to be happens to be right up in the north of Canada. So uh, oh, wow. make of that what you will. <laughs> a lot of people wanted to be in Hawaii, I noticed. So I think that sort of shifted the, um, mm -hmm. the, the center of gravity over quite a bit there. Mm -hmm. uh, but a lot of people wanting to be in Iceland as well, which is nice. I, I'd agree with that. And of course, a few in Australia and New Zealand, and that sort of shifts it in that direction as well a bit, because we're, we're wrapping around the world. So, yeah. And what this other also does is find the person who is furthest away from that center of gravity of where we'd like to be. So let's see, we have this person, let's see, Jonas Nelson. So wherever you are, you are furthest away from where we as a group would like to be uh, in total, according to this. And we, we calculate that with a bunch of orthodromes. Um, and this should come up in a second. Jonas has a great question. How can the average be so far north? I guess my explanation would be since Europe and North America are roughly yeah. on opposite sides, then you I, can imagine yeah. the average is somewhere around there. And then whichever side has more points is the one it pulls towards. Yeah. It, it sort of, I did try it out a few times with known points and it, and it did. If I, if I put something in uh, say Hawaii and something in Australia, then it would find a center of gravity down in the Pacific somewhere. It wouldn't, do the long way around. So it, it did seem to work to me, uh, that one. But, uh, so yes, it wraps over the poles and the uh, and the date lines. So that's how that worked. And we really showed that. We did get beaten to it, the idea of um, uh, pushing data, like crowdsourcing things into ArcGIS Online. Uh, Esri Sweden, uh, in their World Tour event, they did the same thing. They uh, 
They had a quiz, FME server app. You typed in your quiz answers in there. You hit OK. It sent it through FME Cloud and pushed it up to um, uh, to uh, ArcGIS Online. In fact, they created an entire dashboard. I didn't do that. I just created a, a table and a map. But um, yeah, we've uh, they did a bit more. Um, I don't want to rerun it now. Some folks are asking um, if we could rerun it again just to see, but we're, we're sort of a bit behind where we should be right now. So um, we'll, uh, we'll we'll pass on that. Maybe we'll do it later when we've uh, finished. Um, so yeah, you just need the ArcGIS Online, the geometry user parameter, a feature layer, and a web map, and then you create your server app, and uh, that's it. But we will share those uh, things out, so uh, you're not going to miss out on. Them. Yeah. So I guess I'm handing over to Mark now. We're, the other thing we wanted to show this morning was a City Guesser uh, project. Uh, do you want to uh, take over there, Mark? Yeah, sure. Um, so I guess a bit of background on the City Guesser is that um, it's a server app that's running on FME server and. Um, basically, you just need to check the location of the satellite image that's shown to you and then use a map picker to decide where you think that actual location is. And we only pick from cities with a population greater than 1 million. And then you can score points based on how close you are to the answer. But there's a caveat to this because we're doing a bit of a competition here. So when you submit five guesses, we're only going to be taking those five guesses and then summing up your scores to calculate the total scores of everyone. But if you play more than five rounds, we're going to be randomly picking five of those pool of rounds that you did. So if you got a really good score in one of your first five, if you play a sixth game, there's a chance that you will lose that really good score. So um, if you want to take that risk, you're welcome to do so. But we do recommend sticking to just five picks so that um, you're guaranteed yeah. to be able to keep those scores. So uh, yeah, Elizabeth has just shared that link out. Um, and I'll just do a quick demonstration of the game. Uh, I will mention that when it comes to pointing or entering your username uh, for the game, uh, we would recommend using your community username instead of just like Mark, because then there's a good chance of overlapping with someone else's name. Um, so in this case, I'm just going to say uh, Mark W at safe. And then you just click OK to start the game. And then, all right, so we are going to be competing against the community as well. So. Uh, I think we are going to give ourselves about <laughs> five minutes or so to do this. Yeah. What's the plan? Sure. Let's take five minutes and do five of these. And, uh, sure. So we get a minute per. Any idea where that is, Dale? Does it look familiar? Not Calgary, Edmonton? Too much water. Too much water. Okay. I would say it looks sort of East European, but that's just my guess. I'm... So all of these cities have got more than a million people in them, so it mm -hmm. shouldn't be too obscure. There's a lot of places with a million people these days. Yeah, there certainly are. There's about 300 of them, I think, so... Um... Well, oh, there's, a, there's go near a body of water. There's, <laughs> there's one to your left there that looks pretty good. This one here? I do see a volcano down at, at this bottom section. I wonder if yeah. that's a good point of reference. I mean, we're not really trying to... Well, we are trying to win, I guess. <laughs> and there will be prizes for uh, whoever wins and whoever gets the closest uh, guess out of your five. Sure, I guess we'll keep it rough somewhere around here. Elizabeth, yeah. the, I think there's a countdown timer to add some stress to us, so... There right. is. Okay. Let's put a spot down and see where we are, see how far we, we are. Armenia. Oh, there you go. Oh, was it in Turkey? Armenia. Yeah, that's right. too far. Sure. Well done. All right. Well, that's not bad. 
Good I'll start. That next one. That's one. <laughs> Don't be too hard on yourself, folks at home. This game is not easy. Ooh. No. Okay. Water on the left. Yeah. And that now? seems like Portugal. I have a strong feeling it's Portugal. Oh, really? Okay. Wrong. My All first right. guess was USA, West Coast. But... Oh, yeah. That's a good idea, too. I mean, it could be either. I think you go with your gut. Yeah. Go with and your as, gut. as Claire mentioned in the comments, everybody's getting different locations. So, mm -hmm. um, Oh, Portland. That would be an interesting one. I think Portland's too too far from the... Okay. Yeah, I mean, I was thinking California more than... But... Or it could be further south down in South America. Yeah, that's I mean, another that's a bit, good Pretty big mountain, it looks like. Okay. Is this only our... We better go for it, Mark. We're going to lose our... All right. yeah, better... I'll just pick anywhere in here. Sure. Yeah. Oh! How much is that? I think we are only 50 kilometers Whoa. away. <laughs> wow. Santiago. Fantastic. That's amazing. Oh. Okay, we got three minutes here. All right, we got to be fast for these last three. <laughs> yeah, this game's hard. Emily's nailed it. It really is pretty tough, but um, it is fun. Uh, Let's see. Okay. That's oh, Delta. I know where that is. That's, um, oh, actually, do I? Mm. I was thinking the north coast of South America, but I, I was going to go wrong. In north of Australia, but this looks smaller. It might be an island of some kind. Okay. Yeah. Let's try to throw in a guess. Well, I was think? thinking Caracas or somewhere like that. Sure. But I'm not so sure because you can see water down the bottom left, and that that's would... what I'm worried about. That's yeah, true. I guess we'll go think... for. Oh, okay, yeah, Southeast Asia. Oh, I'm sorry, guys. I... Oh, that's all right. When in doubt, go for Indonesia. That's what Mark Mark uh, Ireland says. I did. I did yesterday. Yeah. Uh, can we provide that for you to play? Um, yes, we can. You'll need to have your own. Um... Google account because this is um, this a model feels like shortly. Are we back in Libya? It does look yeah North America, doesn't it? I think we're in. I think we're in Tripoli again. I think during our practice session we had this one. Yeah. Yeah, maybe Algiers. One in three hundred chance. But yes, having the um, <laughs> the names in the local language doesn't really uh, help if you're an English speaker, that's for sure. I guess we'll just throw it just around here. Yeah, yeah. go for All it. All right. Yeah, yeah and, and Claire, you're right. This is very similar to GeoGuessr, um, which we played last time. But we thought we'd do this. Ah, it was Tripoli. Ah. <laughs> See, I think that, that shows if you play this enough times, you're going to get repeats. You'll start getting Yeah, yeah GeoGuessr, I play that all the time. If you want mm -hmm. to, uh, you can friend me on there. I'm Manitoba Mark on, uh, on GeoGuessr. You can play more than five games, but just remember that we're only picking five of your random, uh, randomly picking five of your scores that you played. And if you mm. just have five, then you're guaranteed to have all of those. So only keep playing if you're convinced you're getting better and better and better. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, we got 14 seconds. Let's see. Just what are this is. <laughs> yeah, it is hard. Jeff is right. It's hard to if you know which one it is. We had London yesterday and we couldn't actually get it exact because it's it's hard to know what the true center is. Oh, that yeah, was I'd say that's South Africa somewhere. Okay. Yeah, not bad, I guess, for like an instinctive click. <laughs> Kuto, Mozambique. There we go. Okay. So now you see the answers. So that's five. So has everyone done five? I'm, I'm guessing if we have, you probably have. So, yeah, I can actually check on the back and see if there are a lot of um, rounds still running. But 
I think we're going to close off the game now. Let me just turn off the app just so we can seal those scores in. And then, all right, the game is going off in three, two, and one. All right. So now is uh, the moment to see what the final scores are. Need a bit of a drum roll. And here are our top players of the Woo-hoo. day. Oh, these people are good. Wow. Oh, yeah. 1.7 kilometers from the point. Wow. That's that is impressive. Cool. Wow. Hey, Burke, you got to tell us what where that was. Maybe it was so, the whole town. So, yes, Burke Thompson, congratulations. You That's are the okay. closest uh, guess. Uh, some others were pretty close there. I mean, you you pretty much got the right city just uh, a little bit further out of the center. And Mo NC is that is is that some sort of nickname or is it Missouri, North Carolina, or something? I don't know. <laughs> but you got the top score, which is fantastic. So uh, well done there. Can we send each of those a prize afterwards, uh, Elizabeth? Absolutely, we'll send the first three top people here some prizes you have some way to get in touch with them to get their uh, their coordinates they shouldn't put them in the chat because then everybody will get them but, uh, <laughs> be careful but uh this is that's pretty impressive i, I gotta say somebody yeah. asked how many yes sienna just uh said how many that there are so out of 228 people that's a uh, pretty good um pretty good results uh, these are these are sharp these are these are people that know their their globe i think wow yeah some are closet geo guesses, I think. So, Mark, you're going to show us how that actually works in the FME. Yeah, I'll just swap that over now. And yeah, so the way this works on the on the back end is that this is FME server that is running all these apps. So when you're running that server app, you're just submitting your username and then a randomly picked location um, based on a set of world cities is extracted, we take that point and the latitude and longitude values, and then we load that into the center of a Google Maps satellite view. And that HTML page that you are playing the game on, where you're picking the location, seeing the view, that is all a custom HTML page built in an HTML report generator. And then we're using the data streaming service to send that back to you. And then there's JavaScript and CSS running as well to help you um, interact with the different elements such as the leaflet map picker. And in terms of the Google Maps background, that was a custom a little bit of JavaScript to load that map on using their API, and then as well as a token to be able to load that. So Mark, so if you I, did, yeah. I didn't ask you during the practice, but I mean, what advice would you give to people? Because obviously you didn't author that HTML, I doubt it right in here in the first place. Did you author it somewhere else and then paste it in here? Or how did you, how did you get this to go? Yeah, I was building the code in Visual Studio Code and then just keeping the JavaScript and CSS, everything separate, imagining it was like a web app by itself and then um, putting the JavaScript and CSS onto AWS um, S3 buckets. I was uh, treating that as like a CDN just to serve those back instead of putting all that code in the HTML report generator. Got it. So afterwards, we can give people people this, but it, this is going to need a little bit of work because you'd need to have obviously an Amazon account to toss that stuff up on S3. And uh, and I think you said somewhere in here must be embedded some kind of Google um, API key thing as well. Yeah, that's right. You would need your own uh, Google Maps API token. And Claire asks if this could be made to use an Esri base map. I got to think yes if you knew what you were doing. Yeah. I mean, if you really want to do a more basic one, I guess you could show a uh, show a random satellite image and then sort of switch to a workspace where you you pick a location from the map like we did earlier. I mean, you could yeah. do it like that. It'd be more basic, but... Actually, I wonder if you could use even... In a, I don't know if you could use, embed in a server app that image and then That's... just have a, the, you know, the, the modal dialogue for picking a spot. That would be low tech, but... Um, yeah. You know, we might want to give that a spin sometime. That would be, involve very little extra extra code. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
But I think we can make this available to folk. Just um, we'll make sure that Mark takes his uh, passwords and things out. Otherwise, yeah, for sure. Actually, Mark, if you go back one, I just want to comment uh, on your previous slide. It's it's lovely for me to see the samplers where the magic happens, I guess, because that's what's picking the, because there's there's a little used option in the sampler to say, give me a random one, I guess. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, we, we put that in the product about 28 years ago, and I've never seen a use for it till today. So uh, <laughs> glad to see it's there I'm getting used. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, yeah, when it comes to the JavaScript and uh, running those workspaces on the, the backside when you're submitting those jobs, we're using the FME Server JavaScript library, which is available on the FME Server Playground. Um, that's where you can find it. And um, this is how I'm submitting those jobs in the app. So when you're like clicking submit, it's running that job to verify your results. It's comparing your submitted coordinates versus the actual results using the geographic uh, neighbor finder to calculate that distance. And then uh, we submit that score to our database and then we return the results back to you so you can see your results and then you can play the next round. Um, yeah, so that's how it works in a nutshell. And then I guess I'll pass it back to you, Mark. Fantastic, thank you. So the other thing we wanted to announce today was a grand FME scavenger hunt. We've got this nice little logo there. So um, that's what we're, um, this is the contest that we're running over the summer months or summer months if we're in the Northern Hemisphere. So June, July, August, and we'll finish at the start of September. Basically, there is a whole bunch of different tasks and puzzles and contests and things to do. And uh, you can win prizes for doing them. Um, and so how does it work? Well, we're using this uh, app online called Goose Chase. Uh, so if you uh, want to download that onto your phone or any other mobile device, please do that. Um, if you want to join in the game, um, it's pretty straightforward. You just type the game number in, which is KM3BEW, and then you join a game. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to flip to my camera and then changes over onto my phone. And I am going to sign up for the Goose Chase one. So this was a, a previous game I joined. We did a local uh, game. I'm just typing in the game number, which, of course, I've totally forgotten already. Uh, let me find it. I know I've got it somewhere. It was KM3BEW. Then I hit submit, and it tells me, yep, you're on the great Grand FME scavenger hunt. And it starts today at, well, it started at 8 a.m., which is this morning, Pacific time, and it ends September the 2nd. So select team and join game. So this is a team-based uh, game, uh, just because that's the way uh, it works on Goose Chase, or to work most efficiently. Um, we've got 10 teams already that are open. And you can just join any of those open teams, like I could be Team Jason, Team Desktop, Team Cloud. I see we've got three people on Team Lizard already, and they've scored some points. So mm -hmm. well done to Team Lizard. Um, I should be Team Desktop, I think. So I join Team Desktop. We get this little splash screen. Thank you to our graphic designer, Colin. And we have a bunch of tasks for us to do um so we've got five tasks right now those will disappear next monday and we'll get a new set of tasks and then the monday after that the new set of tasks as well uh and so that just these five will close down on monday the rest of them will stay open until the end of the uh, contest so you can just keep doing them again and again and keep on going and um yeah, you can do them whenever you like. So you could even start right at the end of August and sign up and start doing the uh, the remaining tasks. So yeah, have a go at that. That would be awesome. Like, let's see, um, preview picture, cabinet of me. Many people have souvenirs of their careers, whether it's educational certificates, awards, swag, that sort of thing. And we often keep them on display in our office. 
So we'd like to see your cabinet of me, your ego wall, your I love me wall, whatever you do where you keep all the memorabilia about yourself. And if we can switch back to me again, you can see in the background, this is me. I've got all of my safe awards, the lizard on top, the Autolite from when I was a surveyor. There's about a dozen uh, FME DVDs there, which we don't do anymore, but... Your conference, yeah, badges. Your conference badges are there too. They are. I've got uh, so many of those. Shows I've been to too many conferences. And all I do is click the snap evidence button. And I show that. And I click OK. And then I just submit the evidence. And that's me completed that challenge. 25 points for my team. So simple as that. And I'm not going to do that because it's not my uh, role to be uh, doing this for you folks, uh, for, for that team. Um, so, yeah, there's five tasks to do right now. One of them is a brain teaser. Oh, it looks like somebody's already done the other task. So somebody's completed the uh, your computer task already. It's fantastic. So um, team desktops off to a flying start. Uh, we've got a brain teaser round. So we've got some instructions and we've got a, a map and we can sort of look at the map and try and figure out uh, which square the uh, treasure is in. So, um, yeah, that's um, how that all works. So the game code, can you put the game code in there in the chat? Or actually, I can do that because I've got it. OK. Oh, you got it, Elizabeth? I've got it. Yeah, there we go. AM3BW, that's the one. So yeah, just go into Goose Chase and do that. So flipping back to the slides, where are we? So that's your basics. Um, some more information. We do have private teams. So if you're at a company and you think you can get five people to uh, play along with you, please do. Please uh, let me know. Give me an email. Uh, email me. Uh, Mark. Oh, Mark, it looks like you might have muted yourself there. He's self-censoring his email address. I do. <laughs> yes. I I, um, <laughs> I, uh, I muted myself there. I was saying, I don't know how, when I muted myself, but if you want to uh, have a private team, like you've got five people at work you think would like to play along with you, um, let me know. Send me an email at that link and I can set you up a private team so we could have, if we did one at SAFE, we could be Team Safe Software. If you want to do it for a region, you could be like Team New Zealand. Um, you could be Team uh, uses FME, follows FME on Twitter. You could be all sorts of different teams if you want. Wherever you can get five or more people together, send me an email and uh, let me know and I'll set up one of those private teams for you so you can take part like that. Uh, the one more thing I will say is you can change your team by leaving the game. But when you do that, all of your... Um, let me... Uh, okay, it doesn't matter. Yeah, if you... Okay, there we go. You can leave the game and then go and join another team. So I can say leave the game. But if I leave that game... All of my submissions will be deleted. So anything I did for that team will get deleted. So uh, now, if I'd done anything for that team, they would have lost uh, any of my submissions there. So um, it would be nice not to uh, to do that to uh, other teammates. Um, yeah, on the uh, it should be goose chase in the app store, and it should look like this with sort of two little goose feet uh, in an orange background. So, uh, yeah, and we do have, oh, you, you put the link out, Liz, we put the link out. So click on that link and that will give you the full detail. So, yeah, love to see you there. And yeah, the two, two of them right now are the live photos for your computer and the cabinet of me. Um, so those are the sorts of things you can do. And then there's a the brain teaser map that we've got. If there's any problems with it, like you can't see the image properly on the app, um, add a comment to that article online and I can uh, I can start adding information there. And maybe we'll start a grand uh, sort of 
thread in the community as well for people to uh, chat. So, yeah. So, yeah, please do take part. And it'll be running right up until September. Okay, you ready, Dale? Okay. Random acts of transformation. This is where we uh, pick a transformer at random. We demonstrate, demo what we know about that transformer, and you learn about it while you're being entertained. So it's infotainment there. Um, you can't go wrong, really. Um, so how do we pick that transformer at random? Can you move on to the next slide, Elizabeth? My mouse is uh, stuck for a second. We let the marbles decide. So that's what we are going to do. We are going to let the marbles decide um, which, uh, which transformer we are going to run. Oops, we want the race. So I picked, last time we had every single transformer and I think it slowed things down. Plus we were a bit dubious about um, being able to answer all of those transformers. So I cut it down to a list of 25, which I think we can do any of those. But we'll have to I, uh, while Mark's firing up, I see that Larry has challenged us with the schema mapper. And I still remember being in Sweden about 15 years ago and uh, <coughs> two of probably the world's, in the, in the top 10 of world FME users went up there and gave a talk uh, that said, uh, yeah, the schema mapper, we couldn't figure that sucker out. That was exactly oh. what they did. And uh, that was Peter and Ulf from Sueco. Some of you would know them. And so, um, yes. So the schema mapper in the game here today, Mark? It's not. I think we've got the schema scanner, though. Oh, schema scanner I can handle. Now, I don't know where this is all these are all disappearing. Oh, there we go. It's, it's running down there. So in the lead right now, we have the attribute value mapper, followed by the aggregator. This looks a fairly straightforward course, but it doesn't necessarily mean that one in the lead will actually win. I should tell everybody, well, you know, that the schema mapper just got bulk mode support, Mark. So we can. Oh, really? Oh, yes. fantastic. That should yeah. speed it up enormously. Yeah. So if you have billions of rows you want to schema map, bring it on. Temp path name creator. Do we know about that? Oh, I love that one. I wrote that one. Oh, well, that's a pity. It just dropped down to fifth place. But um... <laughs> as soon as I said that, it knew. Oh, I think the feature type filter. Oh, wow. Made a leap for. Uh... Wow. Filter is kind of an obscure one. That would be a fun one to do a demo on if we have to. Yes, we can do the feature type filter. I think it's going to win. I think the others are all just. What happened? I think, I think it took like... a giant leap straight over. And, uh, is this like the Kentucky uh, Derby? That Mark, the Kentucky Derby where that horse shot in from like 17th place to win. Yeah. The... I think that's what happened here. It made a giant leap and um, just landed right, right on the uh, the path, which was lucky. It could have gone anywhere, just like the aggregator just shot into space. <laughs> yeah, the aggregator shot into space and has disappeared. So um, well, anyway, the aggregator is out of the running. Yeah, well, I think they're all out of the running now. I think the feature type filter is the one. And funnily, the temp path name creator is just about last now when it was leading at one point. So I'm, I'm thankful we don't have to show the minimum spanning circle replacer. I, I, I'm unfamiliar with that one. I, I think we could have done that. But anyway, well. So do I, I don't know whether to let them all finish or should we just. Oh, it'll finish in a second. OK, I'm going to. I'm going to start getting ready, Mark. If you're if you're game. Okay, if you can fire up FME and stop. Okay, we should really stop this because we're going to be here all day waiting for that last marble, the raster <laughs> one. It's just it's going to come. Uh, oh, oh, yep, yep. Here we go. See, I don't know how to stop it and still get the results, but. So Dale's firing that up. Yeah, we could have had the SQL creator, the spatial sorter. But um, yes, we have the feature type filter. And it won by 30 seconds, which is quite a, um, quite a, quite a win. 
So let's just go back to that. I'm going to shut some of the things down off my uh, computer so I can um, so it doesn't okay. run quite as slowly. So am I am I going to dare to share my screen, Elizabeth? Sure. Yes. I think you should. All right. Here it goes. You'll have to tell me what you're seeing, folks at home. Are you seeing the... Whoa. There we go. We can see that. You yeah. might want to zoom in a little bit, just so yeah. we can see uh, a little bit of um, Oof. the workspace a bit better. Well, okay, once I'm on the workspace, yeah, I, I'm not even there yet. Yes. So, okay. Uh, I, I'm going, whoops. Uh, oh, that was yesterday's attempt at the sector generator, which we couldn't uh, quite yes. figure out. So uh, I'm going to go in here. This is so while, while you're doing that, let's just... I'll, I'll mention what the feature type filter, that's what we're working on, isn't it? How that works. Yes. Um, so often you have lots of feature types or layers or tables, whatever you want to call them, uh, read into your workspace on the left-hand side. And then you want to do something with them together. Like you've got, say you've got buildings and then parks and all of these other polygons. And you say, okay, I want to maybe calculate the area of all of them. Well, yes. I could either put an area calculator down on all of them separately, or I could just put one area calculator down and merge them all into it. Yeah. But then the problem is how do I split it back out again? Yes. And that's what the feature type filter will do. It will filter data according to the original type that it came from. So that's, I've got here, this is a really, really old directory, like from, you see, 1997. That's my old, <laughs> um, but, uh, but one thing I want to show to folks at home, I can, I can go in here and select multiple, in this case, MIF files, but then if somebody adds another MIF file later on, I wouldn't know what it was. So I'm instead going to uh, just replace this with a wildcard. I can say, I'm gonna get all the MIF files in that directory, and uh, I'm gonna add those all in here. I'll say, sure, let's take them all. Um, and actually, I'm going to get rid of our sector generator example. That's Boom, probably that. just as well. And, and I'm going to do as Mark said. Boy, I, if I was going to do area calculation on all these guys. OK, so area calculator. Um, now, Mark, is there a fast way to connect them all? I should know my short. Actually, there is. What yeah. you do is you select all of the feature types first, and then you type area calculator. Ah. And then it connects it up to all of them. Giddy up. But there is a feature connection window that you could use instead, but it's easier, I think, and quicker to do it like that. Right. Well, if, if people, there's something here, windows, feature type connections, and that would have let me do it on bulk as well. If That's I would have. That's right. Tried. So. Um, but it's it, just for me, it's a little bit easier to do it like that in the first place. And um, yes, that was a good way. Select them all and then uh, have them there. Okay, so now, now the problem is I wanna get them back out. So I, I could run this, I got caching on, I'm pretty sure. And uh, yep. there they all go. So isn't that lovely? Okay, and there, it's in the British Columbia in the coast of Nigeria. I think we got, <laughs> <I, yeah. laughs> so this is what we call bad data. Um, but uh, I think we've got a coordinate system opportunity on, the, on these MIF files. I think we do. But now if you, if you wanted to add a coordinate system setter, you could click on the little arrow going into the area calculator. Like that guy? Yep. And then type in coordinate system setter or CSS even. Yeah. For those that don't know, you just type the uh, uppercase parts and we'll do that. So we'll do a CSS. What do you think this actually would be in? BC Albers? Yeah, that's my guess. Yeah. BC Albers. This is, uh, this is like GeoGuessr, except guess the coordinate system. It is. All right, let's run that again. And, and I'm, you might find a couple of those as uh, puzzles coming up in the um, uh, scavenger hunt as well. Oh, yes, look at that. System, so. that's, that's pretty good. It seems a bit off, but we'll go with it. Yeah, close enough. <laughs> okay, and so over here we have our areas. And if I go zoom over here, there's a lot of zero areas. Are there any with, well, in fact, there might not be because perhaps these are all linear features. Okay. 
That's sad. But anyway, it was a bad example. We could do a length calculator. That would be a little more interesting. What do you say, Mark? Uh, sure, if they're linear features, that would um, be good. We'll get, we'll and actually, get... even if it is an area feature, the length calculator will calculate the perimeter of the yeah. area feature. There we go. We got something interesting there. But now the point was to actually show this. So if I, again, I'm going to highlight the arrow and I'm going to type FTT, you know, FTF, I think, feature type filter. Here we go, FTF. And now, yeah. boy, it's been a while since I used this. This is a little nerve wracking. Um, I could start typing all these in. Uh, this used to be a performance issue, actually. If we automatically do this, it was too slow. So if I hit update, giddy up. There they all are. Yeah. Uh, just... Pull them in from the workspace. And then if I do this, wow, there they all are. And if I run this. So it's, yeah, just basically split it out again according to the same feature types as on the import. Yeah, and now we see uh, see all these, but uh, yeah, I mean it's not. I don't use that commonly, but I do use that transformer. It uh, it does come in useful uh, uh, very often. Yeah, I mean the it's it's unlikely you'd want to calculate area and length on everything, but the one I have seen more commonly used, or the the original scenario was the clipper. So um, if all of these things uh. were to get clipped. If they were all candidates, and then we had, you know, Mark's favorite little area around Surrey, you'd clip, and then yeah. you'd have one clipper does all the work, and then giddy up, you go from the inside into here, and then yeah. we're we're happy. That was the perfect, yeah. That's and, yeah. I mean, we could just mention as well if you were just writing the data out, well, you could use a fan out on the writer. Yes. Instead. That would be better practice if if my goal, like the reason I'd split this is if I have, if I then feel like doing different processing on these various things afterwards, but otherwise yeah. I'd add a writer. Let's just walk through. Let's say I wanted to go to something uh, like, a, let's, let's stay in the nineties. We'll go to shape files here. <laughs> and um, so I could say, instead of copy from reader, which that would generate me a whole pile of, why don't, why don't I do this in several scenarios? One is I copy from reader. I select all boom. Now I've got all these and now I'd have to connect them up or I'd use that feature type connections window and that would all work, but it's a lot of work. So let's, let's pretend that didn't happen. And let's undo that with a command Z. Let's add the writer again and let's go for, um, is it dynamic I'd want Mark? Um, yeah. Oh, no, actually you don't even need to do that. It could just be a regular one, but you just set a, um, yes. I think if I do this and then I fan out by um, somewhere here. Well, it, it should do that automatically with it being dynamic. So FME yes. feature type, yeah. Yes, it is. It's fanning out by FME feature type. So oh, yeah, dynamic is, is fine, yeah. Done it. So we'd be golden and uh, yeah. that would do it. And so that the understanding that there is a, an article on dynamic stuff that you can uh, look at, mm -hmm. but perhaps I should stop sharing my screen. I, I was just about to say, sorry, I know we're running over time, but if you right click on the feature type filter, you might find that it would automatically create feature types for you as long as you had a writer. Ooh. All right. You know what? I'll, I'll show the folks at home that yet. Okay. That would, be, that would be pretty cool if it did that. So let's take a look. So you think if I right click here and I say... Um, I'm sure... Oh, what? what <laughs> Auto connect. There you go. It's three or four down. Writer connect. Ah, no, I want to say yes. Feature type to clone at. Right. Okay. It's going to clone them all from one. Let's do that. Yeah. Boom. There we go. We got some schema troubles there uh, because all of them now have the same schema. But yeah. nonetheless, the auto connect would have also actually connected them all. If I'd have added the reader, if I'd have, okay, so let's do one more. I'll add the writer, I'll say um, copy from reader. So watch this. And that is a really rare function. I don't think many people even know about that and what auto connect does. And now I'll maybe try, I'm not sure what's gonna happen now. I'm asking for trouble, auto connect, auto connect to uh, probably the shape file two and we don't need to make new feature types, I don't think. Right. There so, we go. Yeah. 
And this looks like a tangled bunch of spaghetti I got going, but uh, <laughs> that's probably the time that we should stop. Yes, but it is a very <laughs> useful uh, function to know about. And, and somebody uh, was Rex asking, oh, sorry. No, go ahead. Okay, just before, I know we have a couple minutes left here of things to show, but before we carry on, I did just want to share out the webinar badge code for today and thank everyone for attending. If you aren't able to stay the couple more minutes here back with us. Yeah, so I will to, this is very, very useful for the community. So if you go to fme.ly slash webinar badge, um, you can type in this code and your username on the community and you'll get a community badge. So you can't. Yeah, perfect. Oh yeah, coming up in the community. Well, we were going to do some <clears throat> excuse me, dot one sneak peeks, but I don't think we're going to do that now because I just don't really have the time until um, it, it releases. I think it's coming up very very rapidly. Um, but what I will try and do is get some more developer demos. If you saw, I did sneak peeks of twenty twenty two before it released. But I didn't get as many done as I wanted to. So I'm going to go back to the developers and say, hey, can you do us a few, a few more uh, uh, demos of what was in dot zero uh, so we can see? Excuse me a second. Hmm. Sorry, I'm going to mute myself just for a sec. Do you want to talk about user conference? Please do. Yes, should be pretty darn exciting. And um, we're very much looking forward to welcoming. Uh, hundreds of FME users worldwide and into that location right there. So um, it's, uh, we're, we're actually, it's starting to occupy a lot of mind space. It's safe. Mm -hmm. And yeah, for the community, we're going to have a community booth, I think there. And um, we're going to have lots of community giveaways. We've got um, the transformer trading cards. So I'll get, I'll give those out and maybe some other surprises as well. So uh, yeah. yeah, love to yeah. see you there. Should be great. Yeah, I mean, thank you. Uh, it, it was been great to uh, to see everyone. Great to have some fun and games where we can actually uh, sort of teach a little bit about uh, what was going on in the background and uh, with the um, with all of the uh, the Arcgis online things that we could do and with the server. And, did I, I, uh, I missed it, Mark? Did the map ever show up? Um, yes, actually. It looks like it did. 128 people um, did that. So let me, yeah, why don't I, uh, I've got to try and remember, how do we visualize that? So the default um, username, we had my username in there, and I think a lot of people just kept that. And I guess a lot of people just kept the default locations. But yes, we did finally get the map in uh, Arcus Online. So uh, there it is. There it all is. Some ah, see that might have skewed the thing. Somebody uh, actually lives up in the middle of the uh, of, of Greenland. So wow. Yeah, thanks for calling in from there. And, that's uh, someone in Nepal or oh, that's northeast of uh, India. There. Cool. Truly, well, we like to say, uh, I know, Mark, it was used to be the British Empire, but now we can say the sun never sets on the FME users. That's right. And the want-to-be locations, that uh, was, let's see. Anybody pick Bruce, Alberta? Um, no, it's one on the border, but I don't think it was, no, not quite in Alberta. But, uh, but If the folks at sorry. home know where I grew up, you search for Bruce, Alberta, this little... Google's analytics would go crazy if they see all these people searching for Bruce Alberta at once. <laughs> but yeah, a lot of people wanted to go to Hawaii, Japan. I'd love to go to Japan and um, Sweden. That's the other place I really want to visit as well. So, uh, I I love I love those places, Mark. Yep, and I can see someone was down in um, where we did yesterday. Is it Seychelles, Mauritius, and Reunion? Yeah. Yes. So, yeah, so it did work in the end. It was just a little bit slow for whatever reason today. So um, 3D yeah. global view. I don't know how you'd do that. That would be cool. Can we do that? I don't know. Um, I've not. <laughs> Tell I'm us. Not total, I'm not an expert in um, 
this, so I might not be able to do that. Bigger pop up cluster points, great label. Yeah, I'm sure it's fairly straightforward. Yes. And, and in the same way that Esri Sweden, they did the um, a whole dashboard about their uh, thing. So we could have done the same thing uh, as well, I'm sure. And it would have looked uh, pretty good. But the whole point about the FME component is that you're you're taking the um, the data wow. that's coming through an FME server app and pushing it using FME into uh, ArcGIS Online. And um, from there, you you can do whatever whatever you can do. Uh, yeah. All right. Fantastic. All right. Yeah, so interact with us and others on the FME community. I'll share out that link. And let us know what you thought of the webinar today. Thanks so much, everyone, for joining us, especially these extra 10 minutes have been really fun. Yeah. Um, let us know what you thought. We have a survey there. And thanks so much to all of our presenters this morning. It's been so much fun playing these games with you all. It's it's been an absolute blast. Thank you again to everyone who uh, attended. It's yes. Brilliant. And please yeah, do everyone. sign up for the, um, for the scavenger hunt. Awesome. Absolutely. Okay. Thanks, everyone. Bye for now. Bye.